Wasted potential in anime. Unfortunately, it's a trope we're all very familiar with. You get introduced to a character who's either really interesting, has a cool backstory, or could be insanely powerful. However, because of plot necessity or them dying off, that character's potential to be interesting or powerful is wasted. And every single anime worth watching has this kind of situation happen more than once. Chad in Bleach, Vanessa in Black Clover, Rock Lee in Naruto. See, Naruto is a fantastic anime and manga in many respects. However, there is definitely some not so perfect aspects to it. And unfortunately, one of those biggest aspects is wasted potential. See, throughout the duration of Naruto, we got to see numerous characters live up to the maximum, even beyond the maximum of their potential. We saw Kakashi go from the cool kickback Jonin to one of the strongest people in the universe with DMS Kakashi. We saw Naruto go from some young orphan to a literal god slayer. Sasuke from a misunderstood child of a murdered clan to, well, a god slayer. Even Sakura, who went into the Junin exams knowing how to use the clone jutsu and throw kunai, became a god slayer, on top of probably becoming the greatest medical ninja in the world. But for every character in Naruto that we saw live up to their potential, there were two to three characters who we didn't get to see live up to their potential. And there is no group where those characters didn't live up to their potential that's more felt than the Konoha 13. See, while some members of the Konoha 13 grew into incredible ninjas who are doing tons of good work for Konoha, like Sai and Ino, kind of a power couple, there are other ninjas who had significantly more potential than either Sai or Ino, who are now doing even less than them. But the problem with these characters reaching their potential didn't start with Boruto. No, it started long before Boruto. In fact, it started before Shippuden. Because if we're genuinely going to sit down and talk about characters who never reach their full potential, there's really only two that are worth mentioning. Those would be Neji and Rock Lee. Today, we're going to be talking about Rock Lee. See, the problem with both of these characters is that they were both technically supposed to die during the Sasuke retrieval arc. Neji was supposed to die from the wounds inflicted by Spider Mouth Guy, and Rock Lee was either supposed to die in his battle against Gara or Kimimaru. However, Kishimoto's editors talked him out of doing this because both Rock Lee and Neji were popular with international audiences, and therefore killing off Neji and or Rock Lee that early in the manga would have deterred international readers from keeping up with Naruto. But because both Rock Lee and Neji were supposed to die in the early days of Naruto, Kishimoto had no plan for them. There was no storyboarding them into Shippuden. They were supposed to be gone long ago. Because of this, both of them get placed on the back burner and hard. And while obviously Neji's waste of potential is a travesty, I take Rock Lee's a lot more personally. Which is why today we're talking about how Rock Lee was wasted. Before we get to talking about wasting anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you don't want my effort to go to waste, guys, then go ahead and follow my other YouTube channel, The Weeb Commander, where instead of talking about Naruto and Boruto, I talk about any other anime. And if you love the idea of me talking about other anime, you're gonna love my anime podcast called The Talkers Anonymous that I do with Danny Mata, where me and him break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So potential, some of us live up to it, some of us, don't. Potential in itself is a double-edged sword because only those with the capability of being great ever have potential, but those with the capability of being great are expected to become great. Those who aren't deemed to have any potential in the first place, but still become great are true Zero to Hero stories. And Zero to Hero stories is exactly what Naruto is all about. Naruto at its core is a story about those with no potential overcoming the limits imposed upon them by those around them. And while obviously Naruto is the best example of this, being a scruffy orphan abandoned as a baby with no parents to raise him, no real ability, and the only true thing to his name being a curse that lives inside of him in the form of a demon fox. And the story of how that child with everything going against him was able to rise to the highest rank of a ninja, Okage. That child who was once banished by all those around him, treated like trash on the side of the road, brought these people together, saved them multiple times, and began to lead them. Now, say what you will about Naruto's potential as a child. Many people, myself included, say that while Naruto in the beginning of Naruto was deemed to have no potential because the only thing he had going for him was Kurama, but down the line, the whole narrative storyline of having no potential is absolutely destroyed by the fact that his parents were two of the strongest ninjas in the history of Konoha. He's a reincarnation of God, and Kurama is stronger than all of the other tailed beasts combined. If you ask me, the only thing Naruto had as a child was potential. But this video isn't about Naruto. This video is about somebody who, to this day in Boruto, represents somebody who was born with nothing, trying to achieve 
everything. But the everything that this person achieved was much less than the everything that Naruto achieved. Even though one could argue that his children, these two children, Naruto and Rock Lee, had the same amount of potential, which is zero. See, from the very beginning of Naruto, Rock Lee and Naruto have been two sides of the same coin. People tend to say that Sasuke and Naruto are two sides of the same coin, and to a degree, they are. However, Naruto and Sasuke are two sides of the same coin when you talk about emotional situations, as they both lost everyone near and dear to them, but they both approached that life event very differently. With Sasuke replacing the love he didn't get from his family with hatred, and Naruto replacing it with hope. But as it pertains to potential, even though Naruto and Sasuke are eventually revealed to be Indra and Ashura's reincarnations, to say in the early days of Naruto that they're two sides of the same coin is a stretch. As Sasuke was a born genius, but Naruto had to work hard for everything he got. Every inch and ounce of power he achieved, he had to sweat for. Now, this isn't to say that Sasuke didn't work hard for the power that he got. We all saw his fireball training montage, but there was supposed to be a dichotomy between these two in the early days of Naruto. However, that dichotomy was slowly being erased by Naruto's hard work. But once again, we're not talking about Naruto and Sasuke here. See, Rock Lee and Naruto were raised in a very similar situation. Situation. However, their potential to achieve greatness being rated at zero were rated off different scales. Naruto's potential being rated at zero was more political in person. The village hated him because of what Kurama had done on the night of his birth. Therefore, since he was branded as a demon child, nobody ever gave him a chance. Tie this into the fact that he had no family, no one to bring him up, and nobody to train him, and also that he was a little bit of a punk, and the village decided that he was a problem child with no future prospects. However, Rock Lee's potential being set at zero wasn't personal or political. Nobody hated Rock Lee, they hated the boy who couldn't use ninjutsu or genjutsu. There was no drunken monster attacking Konoha on the night of Rock Lee's birth. Nobody looked at Rock Lee, cough, cough, Donzo, and said, we're gonna hate this baby so all of Konoha can come together in the wake of the destruction that Kurama enacted. Hatred and ire that Rock Lee garnered didn't happen until much later in his life. But regardless of how it happened, in the early days of Naruto, Rock Lee and Naruto were the same. People viewed to be less than human so far as it pertains to ninjas. No one believed that either of them would be able to achieve anything. And the irony is both of them were trying to achieve the pinnacle of what they were being hated for. Let me explain that sentence. See Naruto, a person shunned for personal, societal, and political reasons was trying to become the key political figure in the village that shunned him. That is to say that Naruto, in the face of political ire, said, these people who hate me, I will eventually lead. Thus Naruto, who was shunned for a political reason and hated on a personal level, was trying to overcome that exact obstacle at the highest level so one day he could lead those same people who hated him him personally. Rock Lee is in the exact same situation. See, Rock Lee's goals weren't nearly as lofty as Naruto's. Rock Lee never even once wanted to become Hokage. Rock Lee simply wanted to become a powerful ninja who could protect those he cared about. And while that goal isn't nearly as lofty as becoming the Hokage, it was important to Rock Lee. And just like with Naruto, the achieval of this goal flies directly in the face of all of the criticism he had received. Like we've already touched on, Rock Lee wasn't hated for personal reasons. He was hated because he was trying to achieve something without the movesets and the powers required to achieve it. And since Rock Lee's goal was to become strong, and the criticisms he had been receiving his entire life told him that he could never be strong, it puts Rock Lee in the exact same situation as Naruto. And therefore, you would believe that Rock Lee's story would mirror that of Naruto's. As Naruto overcame obstacle after obstacle to achieve the village's love, you would assume that Rock Lee would do the same, but with the end goal being power and protecting those around you. Because the moral of both of their stories and the moral of Naruto is that hard work can achieve anything. And the true irony of these two going on an almost parallel journey is that sometimes they were battling for the exact same thing. See, when it really comes down to it, if you boil down the key components of both of their stories, they are trying to represent the fact that hard work can overcome genius. And that's supposed to be the message between Naruto and Sasuke in Rock Lee and Neji. These two duos are different sides of the same coin. And the reason that these stories can't technically be parallel is because sometimes they touch. See, we knew Naruto stood up for the ideology of hard work overcoming anything in his very iconic battle against Neji, where Naruto fought for both Hinata and kind of Rock Lee's honor. And it was during this battle that Naruto was able to show Neji a child genius gifted with the power of the Byakugan, a can-do attitude in a diamond will can achieve anything. And in that moment, one of the key points of Naruto was cemented. As Naruto uppercut Neji into oblivion, we realized that Naruto, with the power of hard work and believing in himself, could achieve anything. But was that Naruto's moment to shine? Like we've already stated, the battle between hard work and genius was supposed to be between Neji in Rock Lee. So Naruto knocking out Neji and teaching him a lesson is kind of like Rock Lee knocking out Sasuke. But I know what you're going to say, Nick. 
I kind of happened. And it did kind of happen. See, we all know that Rock Lee battled against Sasuke and was so fast that Sasuke's Sharingan couldn't keep up. And if we're being entirely real, Rock Lee was dog walking Sasuke. He kicks him in the face three times. However, just as Rock Lee is about to release his hidden Lotus and spin Sasuke into the ground, Mike Guy's turtle summon shows up out of nowhere and somehow with no fingers throws a pin that pins Rock Lee to the wall. So Naruto gets to knock out Neji, but Rock Lee doesn't get to knock out Sasuke. Now listen, obviously, of course, the drive home message here is that Rock Lee probably could have beaten Sasuke in a fight. But if we're gonna have a crossover event here between Naruto and Sasuke and Neji and Rock Lee, we're gonna have Naruto knock out Rock Lee's essentially bully. Why not have it go the other way? Why not definitively hammer home the concept that hard work is able to overcome genius? There's a million ways that Rock Lee could have hidden Lotus Sasuke into the ground without Sasuke dying. Stopping the battle short cuts the narrative short. Now, am I just saying this because I wanted to see Sasuke get pile driven into the ground? No. I'm saying this because it's a consistent theme for Rock Lee throughout Naruto. See, Naruto would go on to achieve exactly what he set his mind on. Naruto decided one day he wanted to become Hokage. And you know what? He achieved that. And Rock Lee wanted to show the entire world that the power of ninjutsu or genjutsu that he was one of the strongest ninjas on earth and more than anything, used that strength to protect those who were important to him. And did Rock Lee achieve that? Not really. Think about it. Naruto goes on to defeat Neji. Obvious. It's a step in the right direction for Naruto, proving that hard work can overcome anything. But Rock Lee loses to Gara, which was a battle with the same exact underlying tones as Neji versus Naruto. Gara was absolutely born with natural genius. His mother inhabit his mother's soul inhabits the sand that he carries around with him, giving him a perfect and impenetrable defense. Not to mention he's the Jinchuriki of Shukaku, has absolutely insane chakra reserves, and is borderline invincible, at least to a Genin or Chunin. And how did he achieve this? Well, he was born with it. Now, obviously, Gara has been through a lot, but was that physical, grueling workouts running around Kodoha 300 times to strengthen your legs? No, that's what Rock Lee did. Just like with Naruto and Neji, the battle between Rock Lee and Gara was a battle between genius and hard work. And the same conversations revolved around Rock Lee and Gara's fight as they did with Neji and Naruto's, with people speculating that Rock Lee would stand no chance against Gara, except for the people that actually knew Rock Lee. But even though the themes are exactly the same between Naruto and Neji and Gara and Rock Lee, the outcomes are very different. The obviously in the battle of Naruto versus Neji, hard work overcomes. But in the battle between Rock Lee and Gara, genius overcomes. Now was Rock Lee technically fighting a way harder fight than Naruto? Absolutely. And did Rock Lee display that through the power of hard work, he was able to fight on almost par with Gara? Also, yes. But thematically, if we're trying to push through the concept that hard work will always overcome genius, why have it not? Now listen, I can hear what you're saying. You're saying, Nick, but Gaara needed to win. He needed to move forward from plot necessity. To which I say, did he? Obviously, I get everybody wants Gaara versus Sasuke. But if you want Gaara versus Sasuke, give yourself Gaara versus Sasuke. Just don't have Gaara battle against Rock Lee. And more importantly than anything, and I understand that you're trying to make Gaara a convincing villain, and obviously him hurting Rock Lee was very convincing, but don't have him defeat Rock Lee Handedly. I mean, obviously, Rock Lee was able to land a couple of blows on Gara, but when Gara got serious, it was all but over. Or honestly, replace Sasuke with Rock Lee. Or just replace Sasuke with Rock Lee. And therefore, instead of having Rock Lee lose, you could just have Gara freak out mid fight. And considering how hard Rock Lee was hitting Gara, it's kind of a surprise that he didn't freak out during their fight. I mean, obviously, he freaked out at the sight of his own blood, which Rock Lee wasn't able to draw from him. But if hypothetically you replace Sasuke with Rock Lee, you wouldn't be flying in the face of the hard work versus genius theme that you're trying to build up here because on one hand while naruto is achieving it rock lee isn't so does hard work only work for a couple of people why have two characters so similar in archetype achieve different things but even if you want to say rock lee getting injured by gara is important for his growth because it introduces tsunade and he gets to bounce back and fight against kimimaru and fighting against kimimaru is another fantastic example of him being wasted see if hypothetically rock lee had lost to gara but had won against kimimaru I would have no complaints. See, Rock Lee bouncing back from injury after undergoing a life-threatening surgery to battle the strongest of the Sound Village Four and come out victorious would have been one of the greatest storylines in all of Naruto. But that's not what we got. See, Rock Lee loses to Gara. He gets basically crippled by Gara. Tsunade is introduced to the mix through the Tsunade retrieval arc. And Tsunade takes on his surgery, fixing him so he should be able to walk again, but probably shouldn't fight. But Rock Lee has to be there for his friends, so he dashes out of the hospital with a bottle of sake. And lo and behold, while Rock Lee is trying to be there for his friends, he comes into combat against the golden child of Orochimaru, 
Kimimaru, the wielder of the lost Kaguya's clan Keke Genkai, Shikatsum Yaku, the ability to extend his bones from his body. This child is so unique and so powerful that Orochimaru figured he would be the perfect vessel to transfer into. Kimimaru in the early days of Naruto represented the height of strength. And once again, just like with Gara, he was a person born with an ability. Now, obviously, Kimimaru had a lot going on character-wise. He was sick, and that's why he couldn't be Orochimaru's vessel. He lost his whole clan. No one's ever saying he had a great life. But being born with Shikatsum Yaku made you so powerful that even members of the Kaguya clan were afraid of him as a child. He was able to generate bones so hard they made steel look soft. He was able to pull his spine out of his own neck to create a sword. Tie that into the fact that he was a very adept user of the curse mark, and he was a problem. A problem for a little while, Rock Lee appeared as though he could handle. See, the Rock Lee versus Kimimaru fight gives us one of the most iconic fight scenes in anime. The Drunken Fist versus the Shikatsum Yaku. And the unpredictability of Rock Lee's moves are an homage to the Jackie Chan movie Drunken Master. And for a second, Kimimaru is on the defensive. That doesn't tell. Rock Lee sobers up. And after sobering up, Rock Lee is no match for Kimimaru, to the point where Kimimaru is about to kill him. That is until, of course, Gara shows up, and Gara saves Rock Lee from Kimimaru, which is an incredible growth moment for Gara, displaying that he's learned from the lesson that Naruto taught him. Narratively, it's one of Gara's most important moments, which is ironic, because narratively, it's one of Rock Lee's worst. See, this is the second time that Rock Lee has been saved from a fight. As without Mike Guy, Gara would have killed him in the tuning exams. And once again, hard work fails to genius. And not only does hard work fail in the face of genius, another genius is required to counteract said genius. Because only Gara with the natural talents that he was born with were a match for Kimimaru. And even then, if Kimimaru hadn't died of his chakra disease, Gara was gonna get packed up. But was Gara's struggle against Kimimaru a display of the fact that Rock Lee would never be able to beat him? I don't really know. And even if it is, is that the lesson we're trying to drive home here? But really, the biggest lesson we're getting here is that the only way to defeat talent is greater talent, or luck, I guess. And while once again, obviously I'm not complaining about the Gara versus Kimimaru fight, it's absolutely sick. It's a perfect example of the Sisyphus-like life that Rock Lee lives, as he's cursed to a life of hard work only for it to fail when it matters most. And in fact, if you look through the entirety of Rock Lee's history, he's never won a fight. The one battle he was going to win against Sasuke was interrupted. And even if you go even earlier in the tuning exams, like in the Forest of Death, once again, Rock Lee loses. See, Rock Lee obviously steps in to save Sakura against the Sound Village Ninja. And while in this battle, he does get a couple of good licks in against the Sound Village Ninja, uh, he loses. He's about to drive one of them into the ground with a reverse Lotus, or primary Lotus. I don't think you can use the reverse Lotus until you've opened like the fourth gate or something. Regardless, he's about to drill somebody's head into the ground and hard. However, as he's about to drill one of these kids into the ground like a Phillips head, the ground is softened by another one of the Geni. And it's at this point that Rock Lee is taken out of the equation after having really not changed anything outside of giving Sakura a moment to breathe. And then even with the minute the Sakura has gotten to breathe, she really doesn't drum up much. She's able to tank a couple of kunai and stab one of them in the arm, but it's not until Sasuke wakes up from his little nap and uses the curse mark for the first time that any of these sound village ninja get taken care of, which is Sasuke tapping into a power he just got and did nothing for. While Rock Lee, who trains every single day, 14 hours a day, couldn't beat one of them, Sasuke is just ripping their arms off. Even Shino was able to come out victorious against Zaku, the sound village ninja with the air vents in his hands, the one who softened the sand. And Shino's backstory is substantially less interesting than Rock Lee's. Now listen, I fully understand that we can't have Rock Lee a side character clearing the top obstacles of Naruto. The only people allowed to do that are Sasuke or Naruto. But if one of the key themes of your show is hard work can overcome anything, why would you introduce a character who is the full living embodiment of that sentimentality and then never have them achieve what they're trying to do? Now, once again, I can hear you guys saying, but Nick, Rock Lee became super strong. And like sort of, I guess. But think about why Rock Lee got strong. Now, mind you, Rock Lee's strength, honestly, still kind of up in the air. Literally, all of his feats 
non-canon. The battle against Shiro, the seven heavenly breaths guy, non-canon. Beating the shadow clone of Naruto that manifested a four tails cloak with Mike guy, not canon. Rock Lee didn't even get any fights against Edo Tensai Shinobi in the fourth great Shinobi World War. The only legitimately slightly impressive feat we have from Rock Lee that is canon happened in the last, when he and the Suicide Corps, who are a bunch of people he trained to use the eighth gates, kick a meteor in half. But to give the entirety of that credit to Rock Lee when there's like six other dudes in the seventh gate kicking the meteor with him, it's kind of a stretch. Ironically, Rock Lee's greatest feats are his failures. Almost beating Gara, almost beating Kimimaru. Holding his own against the Sound Village Ninja for a couple of minutes. That's it. But even if you do want to say that Rock Lee is strong, even though I believe people who say that Rock Lee is strong are conflating his strength with Mike Guy's, think about the reason that Rock Lee got strong in the first place to protect those close to it. It's built into the credo of using the eighth gates. You're only ever able to use it if you're protecting somebody near and dear to you. And he doesn't even achieve that. Who are the three people closest to Rock Lee? Mike Guy, 1010, Naji. His team. Now, 1010 never needed protection. You don't need protection if you don't show up. Can't be killed if you're not on screen. But Mike Guy and Neji needed protection. Mike Guy went toe to toe with Madara, opened the eighth gate. Now, one could argue that Mike Guy did this to protect Rock Lee and all of the other shinobi, and he absolutely did. But after seeing the valiant sacrifice of his sensei, why didn't he step up? As Madara was regenerating half of him that Mike Guy had kicked off with Night Guy, why didn't Rock Lee step up? Why didn't Rock Lee see that Mike Guy was giving it his all and decide to open the eighth gate as well and die by the side of the person that he loved most? And don't even get me started on Neji. Rock Lee was nowhere around to save Neji from the sticks. In fact, Neji was doing a better job of protecting those around him than Rock Lee. And now all of this strength that Rock Lee has built up over the last couple of years that was supposed to protect protect those close to him isn't. As Neji, the antithesis of hard work, the natural born genius is actually embodying the idea of protecting those around him better. Even in Boruto, Rock Lee has been thrown away as a character. Sure, he shows up occasionally in anime canon episodes, but in the manga, he might as well not even exist. Which is ironic because in this new era where we're fighting against Otsutsuki with karma markings or Rinnegans in their palm that are able to nullify things like Genjutsu and Ninjutsu, the importance of Taijutsu has skyrocketed. Ishiki invaded Konoha and left almost the entirety of the Konoha 13 in the dust, when in actuality, with just the powers of the Eighth Gate, Rock Lee would have been a good battle against the Ishiki. But Rock Lee's role in trying to repel Ishiki is so inconsequential, we don't even see the Konoha 13 struggle against him. Now, if the entirety of the Konoha 13 was thrown away like this, I guess I would have nothing to complain about. But other characters who got kind of ignored in Naruto took huge steps forward in Boruto, like Eno in Sai. It's almost like the argument that Rock Lee's story of a zero becoming a hero was replaced by Mike Guy's, but even that doesn't really play. See, Mike Guy's strength is actually concrete. We've seen feasible feats from him. He had his numerous battles against Kisame. He had his eighth gate moment against Madara. Mike Guy has shined when it mattered, and Mike Guy symbolizes all of the things that Rock Lee symbolizes. But a lot of Mike Guy's feats are also slightly tinged with a little asterisk. See, the first time that Mike Guy and Kisame battle, it ends as a draw. The second time they battle, Mike Guy wins by opening the seventh gate, but it's revealed that that was only a 30% kind of clone of Kisame. And the third time, Mike Guy does technically win. However, he's battling against Kisame without Samehara, and Kisame kills himself. And while obviously Madara acknowledges Mike Guy is the strongest Taijutsu user he's ever come across, Mike Guy loses. And like, pretty badly. And what's wild is if Madara was the last and final bad guy, Mike Guy losing against him makes sense. Mike Guy, a side character, shouldn't defeat the main baddie. That's gotta be the main characters, annoyingly. But Madara wasn't the final baddie. So there's really no reason that Mike Guy shouldn't have been able to defeat him. See, Mike Guy could have very easily defeated Madara, and then Black Zetsu could have slithered over and used Madara's dying body to bring Kaguya to life, which would have been substantially better than Black Zetsu just punching a hole in him and just being like, you're dead now. But instead, once again, hard work failed. And this is even worse when you think about the fact that Naruto, by this point in time, was no longer the symbol of hard work. Sure, obviously Naruto had done a lot of work over the course of Naruto and Shippuden to get as strong as he was. But by this point, Hagoromo had already told Naruto and Sasuke that they were reincarnations of gods and given them both insane power-ups. Power-ups they did nothing for. And yet the only people who can save the world are these two people who just got some of the strongest abilities in the show 
drop to them. While the characters who still represent what the core value of the show was, failed to come even close to competing. Now, I'm not gonna say that Mike Guy's character was wasted. Mike Guy has substantially more moments in the sun than Rock Lee, but having more moments in the sun than Rock Lee is a low bar. At least Mike Guy had his rivalry with Kakashi, and at least Kakashi acknowledged the fact that Mike Guy was stronger than him now. You know, until of course Kakashi unlocked DMS through no hard work. Not only was Rock Lee wasted, but the theme that Naruto is about hard work overcoming all other boundaries was also wasted alongside with him. And that's honestly the biggest tragedy of Naruto, that it forgot who it was when it started. But what do you guys think? Do you think Rock Lee was wasted as a character? Do you think Mike Guy was wasted as a character? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Who knows? Maybe I just want Sasuke to be replaced with Rock Lee. Would that be so bad?